What we do is uh, we make pop records in a bedroom. We make them with the minimum of equipment, the minimum resources available. We've done quite a lot of releases on, on seven inch vinyl. The thing about seven inch singles is they're short. So you don't have to spend a lot of money recording it. You don't have to spend long cutting it and you can manufacture them relatively cheaply. It's mechanical but it's sort of organic somehow. Yeah, and it's still and what's nice and sort of weird about it is it's it's totally out of time, yet it's actually doing better now than it was say five years ago, which is kind of a weird thing. You know, it's this sort of thing that should have should have been gone. Should have died out and, and it hasn't. Seven inch vinyl is is popular because it, in a sense it's always been popular, it's a sort of classic form, but um, vinyl I think has also been associated with so, so much of the music that has been cult, cultish, like punk rock, you know, classic singles, the covers are almost as important as music sometimes. You can get our records in Rough Trade, it's kind of an ethos that Rough Trade's got which is probably similar to our ethos. A sense of, I mean a sense of that, a sense of like enjoyment in the thing and a sense of fun and a sense of wickedness to a degree and so like some of that which kind of rough trade has. Seven inches have always been there but uh, quite recently, uh, well in the last three or four years there's kind of been a boom again. Loads of little labels started and loads of people started buying them and more people because people were buying them more people started making them. I think people want the stuff in short bursts. You know that's how life is. You know you want your life like happening quick in like bursts and stuff. You don't want it like long and drawn out and boring. And some of the tracks are like acoustic guitar and voice and some of the tracks are like, you know, all computer stuff, all sample stuff. So I mean already you're kind of beyond a genre. And we've both been a little bit around the rock and roll block. Perhaps unlike some other people who are making records in the same way, we're able to bring to it a certain sort of musicality. What's that stone in the throat? Those metals on the back. I mean, there are a lot of people making this, this kind of music, if you want to use the broad sort of generic term, post-rock. I mean, it implies sort of post-modernist take on music, which is essentially a grab bag of different elements. Certain bits of equipment that we use would be considered comic in terms of technological terms like the Atari or the drum box that we're using, which is the kind of thing that people had on the top of their organs in 1981. Some of what we do is made up out of, out of samples of, of, of records that I might buy, like second hand shops and stuff like that. It'd be something completely odd or completely recontextualise it and, and chop it around, change it. It's usually stuff that comes from people that have died <laughs> and all their stuff has been taken to the second hand shop along with their record collection of um, easy listening music. It's one of my records. It's me. It's completely bizarre. I don't actually have this record either. When we play live we kind of just use various boxes and machines and sort of rhythm boxes and guitars and just try and combine them. It's quite exciting to do something that has textures live that aren't guitar, bass and drums. I think uh, the, it, it is odd in, in an era of laser discs and um, digital this, that and the other that, that vinyl is, uh, is kind of cool. But I think it's to do with the idea of uh, looking to the 70s as a benchmark of what of a place to look at the future. I think that appeals to us because it's so much part of our youth. Mm -hmm.